ladies and gentlemen. Anton and I would like to welcome everybody very cordially. We are extremely happy and it is really a great honor for us that Mary Bell took the effort to come to Vienna to join our conference. It's now 50 years ago that John Bell formulated his groundbreaking theorem. So I welcome you as Rector of the University of Vienna, especially I welcome the widow of John Bell, Mrs. Mary Bell. I'm pleased to see you here today. This is uh, John Bell, the poet. Uh, take it as a, I don't know what sign that I actually had still. Fast and communication would never be possible. Of course, we may be falsified in that statement. box after the other, you need at least three boxes. You need at least repetition of one of the boxes once more. So if you allow low D primes, you will get a lower bound and for larger D primes. An SD prime is related to the dimension of the Hilbert space. To take photons out of a beam that comes from far away and send it through an optical switch and still get decent contrast. What it basically means is how fast can you feed forward something and then implement a certain rotation in your state. The primary idea is that what we really have are events. Events are in space and in time. But what is really surprising is that wherever we look, we see only matter. So where did the antimatter disappear? And that's an open question. Experimentalist, and they like to repeat experiments to check that you show us your socks. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I must say, this is one of the things I have to suffer now. <laughs> every, every, every time when Alan Aspect meets me, I have to show my socks. So, excuse me. We are just collecting, as you know, we, we are just collecting energy. About it, the haggard eyes, the unkempt hair. Anyway. All right, so let's look at information causality below and above the Bell Prize. And right now we're doing frequency multiplexing in our latest chip down here. This means that if we would study now entanglement or like a hierarchy of the which state is more entangled than the other using separate maps, then we might fail or we definitely, actually we will have to fail. Set it at 30 degrees. Oh yeah, I got an idea. I think I'll set it at 30 degrees. This is how difficult it is to um, to deal with optical absorption in a millikelvin environment. So it gets overlaid with any, any uh, green down conversion radiation that's made in that crystal. But I think, uh, broadly speaking, uh, that's one way of understanding quantum mechanics. What cannot go faster than light? And a person with hanseatic humor added by him John Bell, for example. It's amazing that nowadays some of our colleagues who again are here in this room can build objects of microelectronics and these objects are real quantum behavior. They can be entangled, etc. Just like our photons, our ions, our atoms, etc.
So why do I tell you that? Well, let's look now at the effects of maximum likelihood and tell you The assumption is that you go to the provider, the provider can do whatever he wants with the boxes, but he cannot break quantum mechanics. And it's simply the idea that every statistical correlation should be explained causally. So the, if your implication is correct, okay, that means you did not make a mistake during your... Then I get a subset of, of quantum theory that formulated in Hilbert space has many of, the, of what we think of as paradoxical features of quantum theory. So they had their own laser setups for manipulation, they had their own electronics for uh, all the manipulations. Mention how difficult are the conditions to make an experiment. He mentioned an experiment in the snow, very cold, and so But come on, guys, you experimentalists are really lucky because the photons work exactly the same with minus 20 degrees Celsius. Say so, locality is now finished. The warning I give you is I don't know whether it's a tiny length or a giant length. A useful statement uh, in quantum information, for example, uh, for security proofs and things like that. And in this talk, I would like to go a little bit deeper into this question of what freedom of choice means and what implication it has. And in this case, the, the difference between what you have in distance and what you need is a factor of 10 to the 9. Which is not a Hilbert space, it's what's called a pre-Hilbert space. You don't keep the absolute integral fixed, but the square integral fixed. He said, when you talk about the Copenhagen interpretation, what you're actually talking about is quantum mechanics. I should confess one thing. I am here very much along with Bohr. The distinction microscopic, macroscopic has nothing to do at all with the distinction quantum classical. You are all invited to come again after 2000, 2014, again in 2028 to Quantum Unspeakable 3. Finally, I also would like to thank uh, the speakers and all the participants. It was you who made this event to this event. Thank you very much. As Anton said, we see us in 2028.